In today's video, we are going to be building this pop-up using the Otter WordPress plugin. And Otter has an amazing selection of Gutenberg blocks that allow you to build stunning WordPress pages. And I'll be leaving a link to Otter in the description so you can go ahead and check it out. Okay, so we are going to begin from our WordPress dashboard. Let's go to posts on the left hand side. You can hover and click on all posts. So now I'm going to select the post that I want my pop-up to show up on. You can either use a post or a page, but for this example, I'm just going to use a post. Let's close this notice and I'm going to click on this plus icon on the left and let's type in pop-up in the search box. Click on pop-up and scroll to the bottom of the page. Okay, so here we have our pop-up block right at the bottom. I'm going to click on edit pop-up and now we can start building our pop-up. I'll click on the plus icon to add a section block and this is by order. Let's add a one to one or a two column section. So as you can see, we have two equal columns. I'll click on the first one to add an image block. Now we can find a suitable image from our media library. Let's scroll down to find an image. Let's use this one. Click on select. And now we have our image. Now we are going to add a new block to the other column. Let's add a heading block. Okay, and let's change the tag to an H3. You may select a different tag based on your own situation. Now I'm going to type in Cyber Monday Sale into this block. Monday Sale. Okay. So now we are going to use shortcuts. Let's press Enter to add a new block, then press forward slash, then Enter one more time. Now we have a new heading and we are going to type Save up to 50% on all advertising products. And let's add an exclamation mark. Okay. Let's press enter, then type forward slash, type buttons to add a button block. Press enter one more time. Now we have a button and our button text will be shop now. Okay. So now we have all of our headings and our button. So I'm going to go to the top to click on the list view icon. And now we can accurately select our design elements. So there's our pop-up section and column blocks. Let's start with the first column. Let's move over to the block settings on the right hand side. We have a layout, style, and advanced tab. Let's work with layout. Under layout, we just want to go to the spacing section. Scroll down to find padding. And here we just want to add 20 pixels of padding all around. Okay, now we have some space around our image. Let's go to the other column. And we are going to do the same. Let's add 20 pixels of padding all around. So now we can customize our headings separately. Let's begin customizing the first one. Let's move over to the block settings on the right hand side to change the text color to our primary accent color. And now we can move to typography. Let's click on these three dots and we are just going to enable letter spacing by clicking on it. Okay. Now we can change our text size to 20 and let's select light from the appearance menu. Let's change our letter case to all caps. And now let's make our letter spacing four pixels. All right. We are done with the first heading. Let's move to the next one. We can just click on the block and you can always glance at the list on the left to make sure it's selected. Now we can go back to the right hand side to change our text color to one of our dark theme colors. I think this one is good. Let's make the text size 42. Let's see if we need to make any changes with the appearance. Um, right now it's set to default, which is actually semi bold. Um, I'm going to leave this as default. Now we can go ahead and customize our button. Let's click on the button to begin customizing it. We can choose one of our theme styles. There's default, primary and secondary. I think I'm going to use primary. Okay, I think that looks good. For the width settings, we have 25, 50, 75, and 100. I think 50 looks good. If you need to, you can always utilize the other settings to make more advanced customizations, but I think I am happy with what we currently have. Okay, so now we have customized our headings as well as the button, so we can go ahead and preview our changes in a new tab. So here is our pop-up, but it's too wide, so we need to fix it. Let's close it. And we can also close this tab to go back to our WordPress editor. And we forgot to add a link to our button. So let's do this first. Let's insert the URL for our advertising category. So I'm just going to copy this and let's go back to our button. And now we just need to paste it in this field. And you can either press enter or click on this icon to set the link. Okay. Now we can deal with the width of our pop-up. So let's go back to the list view to select the pop-up block. Now let's go ahead and configure our pop-up settings on the right. First, we have open trigger. It's set to on load, which means that our pop-up will show up once the page loads. On anchor click, will show the pop-up when an anchor is clicked. And the next option we have here is on scroll. So this one will show the pop-up once the page scrolls to a specific point. If you select on exit, the pop-up will be shown once you exit the page. So let's select on scroll. 
and we just want to set our scroll distance to about 40% of the page. Okay, I think that's good. And we have a few toggle switches there. The first one is show close button. We can see that once we turn it off, the X gets hidden. Let's keep it off. The next option lets you close the pop-up once you click outside of it. Let's keep this one on. We also have close on anchor click, which we are going to keep off. And the final option dismisses the pop-up automatically for recurring visitors. Let's keep this off. In the style tab, we want to set the minimum width to about 200. And for the maximum width, we can make this about 800. Let's change the background color from white to light gray. And if you want, you can also change the color of your close button. So as an example, I'm going to change it to this orange color. I think black is better. I'm going to skip the overlay settings, but you can always include these in your design if you need to. You can also add custom CSS and configure visibility conditions. I think I'm done customizing this pop-up, so I'm gonna click on update at the top of the page. And once the update is complete, I'm gonna click on the preview button to view my pop-up in a new tab. And now we can scroll down to 40% of the page to trigger our pop-up, and there it is. Now we can click on our shop now button. As expected, it takes us to our advertising category. Okay, so now you know how to create a pop-up using order blocks in Gutenberg. Thank you so much for watching.